Samson Pauha fading again against the body shots of Jesse Ferguson in the eighth round. And I think you're right, Roy. I think it was Ferguson's decision to begin attacking the body again that took whatever was left from Pauha. Yeah, that's how you work big, big punches. You have to go to the body to weaken them. If he'd have went to Jesse's body, maybe Jesse wouldn't have had that much power left to be able to punish him like he was. But he never invested any body shots, uh, invested in his body shots early in the fight. So it allowed Ferguson to stay strong. All Ferguson needed was to take a couple of rounds off to rest, and then he comes back strong again. Doctors examining Samson Pauha. Be sure he'll be okay leaving the ring. And the crowd on this side of the ring rising in support of Jesse Ferguson as he seeks a little adulation. Incidentally, we'll take another look at the end of the fight. Roy? Jesse was working the body so well here, and it was just wearing Pauha down. And that's why I said something about it. There was one of those uppercuts from the inside again. Not, as, not nearly as hard as the earlier uppercuts were, but it's the body work that paid off. These body shots weaken fighters down the line. Wham, there's the uppercut, and he can't take anymore. He's worn down, not from that one head shot, but from the body shot. A lesson in professionalism delivered by Ferguson to Pauha, and incidentally, on the three official scorecards at ringside, Ferguson was going into the next round with a 78-72, 77-73, 77-72 lead. So he had won the fight to all intents and purposes on the scorecards. Originally from Nightdale, North Carolina, now from Willingboro, New Jersey. Jesse Ferguson has another victory. Let's go up to Michael Buffer for the official particulars. Ladies and gentlemen, referee Wayne Hedgepeth has seen enough, and he calls a halt to the bout at 2 minutes, 53 seconds of round number 8. The winner, the heavyweight veteran from Philadelphia, Pennsylvania, Jesse Boogeyman Ferguson. Before you even ask me anything, let me just tell you, I'm the real puncher. <laughs> I know you saw that tonight. I'm the real puncher. I just had to get, I just had to warm up a little bit. That's all. Ah, right, there, you know there, seems, there still seems to be some giddy up in the old war horse. Oh, it's a, it's a lot of giddy up. You know, 258 pounds, and I weigh, and I'm weighing 235. It's not easy to carry around for eight rounds and constantly throw punches. Now, I heard you talking about your wife having seen something on the tapes about him. Was oh, that yeah, what you were saying? She saw the tape. She said, you can hit this guy with uppercut, and you can, and you can get him. Is That's she, what she told me. Is she your boxing scout and assistant trainer? No, she's like, look at who I'm going to fight. Uh -huh. And, uh, you know, she, she make her own, uh, analy 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 you know. Analysis. Yeah, analysis. Well, well, what, what's what's next, Jesse? Who's next? Who who next are you gonna test? I, I can name I can name four or five guys: David Tua, a lot of, as long as I wear a big cup. <laughs> uh, I see Kurt Johnson. He's checking me out. Uh, now tell us quickly the story about why you went for the first time in your life to be a sparring partner with Mike Tyson last year, and what you discovered there. I, I discovered that, that I still can. Uh, fight, you know. My, my, Mike is, is one of the great, greatest fighters of uh, our time, and uh, he punches real well, and I was able to uh, stand up under him. He didn't have me down. Maybe had a nosebleed, that's it. You know, but I, I hung in there with him, and he showed me that I still can do this, so I told my trainer, I'm, I'm, I'm putting 100% into this from now on. I'm not staying out of the gym for no reason at all, even if I don't have a fight. Exactly. And all these young guys who are trying to use my name, exactly. hey, I might not never be in the Hall of Fame, and I might not never be considered a great fighter. But ain't nobody never gave me nothing. I have to earn it. Thank you very much, Jesse. And you. you are in the Hall of Fame for us. <laughs> Jim? Final punch that numbers for Jesse the Boogeyman Ferguson. And you can see that he outlanded Samson Pouha by 75 punches. Out threw him by 72 punches. Landed at a much higher percentage and generally controlled the fight throughout with professional technique. He understood what to do when Pohua leaned inside against him and did most of his damage in those situations. So Samson Pohua misses the chance to try to move up to that rung of the heavyweight division occupied by the Andrew Galatas and David Tuas and Obed Sullivans of the world. And Ferguson stamps his, himself as an outstanding potential opponent for some of those young fighters.
Yeah, when a guy can keep himself as well conditioned as Ferguson has, George Foreman has encouraged a lot of people to go back, look at yourself. You may still have something left. Ferguson has been consistent out throughout his whole professional career. He's never took a long, long layoff, and now at his older age, he has to stay more consistent, which he just said he would. So that'll help him stay in shape enough to where he can beat a lot of the young fighters. They're not as conditioned as he is. Or maybe we can match him against George Foreman, because among all of those heavyweight champions he's fought, he never fought George. Yeah, but you got to remember, George still toting that Jeep around. It's a little bit different <laughs> when you're fighting George. <laughs> what do you think happens to Jesse Ferguson next, Larry? Well, he's going to make some money, and that's the best news. You know, yeah. at, at the base of boxing, you need, you need people like Jesse Ferguson. You wouldn't have a sport without fighters like him. Um, and I would say affectionately, people used to call fighters like this a bum. Affectionately, he's a great bum. Yeah, he's as good a <laughs> bum as you're ever possibly going to exactly. get. Exactly. If you were the main events people handling a rising contender with a sparkling record like David Tua, and the suggestion is made, okay, Tua's buddy Samson Pouha took a beating at the hands of Jesse Ferguson. Let's see if David can prove that he's better. Would you take that fight? Absolutely. You know, it, it, he is the toll gate, and if you have championship ability, then you ought to be able to go through it. All right, we'll be seeing Tua here in the weeks to come, so we'll get a look at his progress. Right now, let's look ahead to the main event of the evening, the 140-pound battle in which...